Before we continue, I encourage you to pause the video and take a moment to explore different approaches to the problem we're solving. Remember, programming is all about problem solving, and there's often more than one way to achieve a goal. Feel free to experiment with different variable names, string manipulations, and logic structures. Don't hesitate to seek out solutions online or in documentation if you get stuck. This is your opportunity to practice your skills and discover what works best for you. Once you've had a chance to explore, come back and compare your solution with what we'll cover next. Let's dive in. The expression to number, name, not equal nil checks if the variable name can be converted into a number using the to number function. Here's how it works. To number, name this attempts to convert the value of name into a number. If name contains a valid numerical value, to number returns that value as a number. If name cannot be converted to a number, to number returns nil. To number, name, not equal nil, this compares the result of to number, name, to nil. If to number, name, successfully converts name into a number, the result will not be nil, indicating that name contains a numerical value. If name cannot be converted to a number, the result will be nil. So, to number, name, not equal nil is a way to check if name contains a numerical value. If it does, the script converts it into a string using to string name to ensure consistency in further processing. If name does not contain a numerical value, it remains unchanged as a string. In our example, string.upper is used to convert the user's input for their name to uppercase. This ensures consistency in handling the name regardless of whether the user enters it in lowercase, uppercase, or a mix of both. By converting the input to uppercase, we simplify the process of checking and comparing the user's response later in the dialog. Next we will check if the user has entered a name. If the name is empty, it prompts the user to enter a name. Otherwise, it greets the user with their name and asks if they would like to continue. It then reads the user's response and converts it to lowercase for consistency. Let's break down the logic step by step. First we will check if the user's name is empty. This is done using the condition if name it is equal to an empty string. If the user's input for the name is an empty string, the script proceeds to prompt the user to enter a name. Otherwise, it moves on to greet the user with the entered name and continue with the dialog. Step 2 we will handle the case when the name is empty. If the user's name is empty, it prints a message informing them that they didn't enter a name. This is accomplished with io.write, you didn't enter a name. In step 3 we will greet the user and ask for further interaction. If the user's name is not empty, the script greets the user with their name. Then it prompts the user with a question, would you like to continue? Yes slash no. Step 4 we will read the user's response. It reads the user's response using io.read and stores it in the variable response. Step 5 we will convert the response to lowercase. To ensure consistency, the script converts the user's response to lowercase using string.lower response. 
This allows the script to handle both uppercase and lowercase input from the user in a uniform manner. Overall, this logic ensures that the script interacts with the user effectively, handles empty inputs appropriately, and maintains consistency in processing user responses. In the last part of our script, we will check first if the user wants to continue. This is done using the if, else if, and else statements. It checks the value of the variable response, which stores the user's input. If the user's response is yes, the script proceeds to execute the corresponding block of code. If the response is no, it executes another block of code. If the response is neither yes nor no, it executes a default block of code to handle invalid responses. Next, we will handle the case when the user wants to continue. If the user responds with yes, the script prints a message indicating that the user wants to continue. The message is displayed using io.write. Great. Let's continue. This encourages the user to proceed with whatever action or dialogue is being presented. After that, we will handle the case when the user does not want to continue. If the user responds with no, the script prints a farewell message. The message is displayed using io.write, understood. Goodbye. This informs the user that the interaction or process has concluded. Now we will handle invalid responses. If the user's response is neither yes nor no, the script prints a message indicating that the response is invalid. The message is displayed using io.write, not a valid response. This prompts the user to provide a valid response, ensuring that the script can proceed accordingly based on the user's input. Overall, this part of the script efficiently handles the user's response and provides appropriate feedback based on their input, ensuring a smooth and interactive user experience. Note. The reason there are two end statements at the end of the script is to close both the else block and the if statement inside it. The first end corresponds to closing the else block, which encompasses the code that executes if the user's name is not empty. The second end corresponds to closing the if statement that checks if the user wants to continue. This if statement is nested inside the else block. Having two end statements ensures that both the else block and the nested if statement are properly closed, maintaining the correct structure and flow of the code. Using string.lower and string.upper in Lua scripts can enhance the user experience and improve script functionality by standardizing input and ensuring consistency. These functions are particularly useful when working with user input, as they allow for case-insensitive comparisons and text normalization. By converting user input to lowercase or uppercase, scripts can handle variations in input more effectively, reducing the risk of errors and improving overall usability. Additionally, these functions can be used to enforce specific formatting requirements or conventions within the script's logic, contributing to cleaner and more robust code.